<clears throat> All right, before I take roll, um, I want to kind of clarify and make sure that everybody is aware. You don't have to be in class in person for this class. Uh, this is a synchronous class. It may not have been originally when you signed up for it in the spring, but it is now a synchronous web class, which means that you can come face to face uh, and have the lecture in person, or you can join us synchronously online, which means that you have Blackboard Collaborate pulled up um, and you're logged in to our session uh, live. Okay, so you do have that option uh, if you want to take advantage of that. And that you don't have to tell me if you know if you decide that you're just going to do online one day or whatever, uh, just because you don't feel like coming in one day or you're sick or something. You don't have to tell me. It'll I'll take attendance every day. And if you're online uh, in the collaborate session, you'll get the attendance credit for that. Okay. Um, I also, speaking of attendance, want to kind of let you know of the way the policy is working for this class for the semester and how uh, I'm planning on doing things. Okay. Um, we do have an official UACCM attendance policy that I have to follow. Okay, and that says that if you miss if you miss two weeks worth of class for you, that's four class periods. If you miss four class periods and you are failing, then I have to drop you. Okay, I have to fill out the administrative withdrawal form and withdraw you from the class. But both of those conditions have to be met. So if you're not failing, if you're still passing, that attendance number doesn't really matter. Okay. If you're somebody that can go uh, the entire year, the entire semester, and not come to a single class and not log in synchronously, but can get all of your stuff done just like it's a web class and have an A at the end of the semester, that's great. You don't have to worry about being there. Okay. But it'll still show that you were absent, but it's not going to affect you in any way. You'll still have a grade at the end of the semester. Okay. I don't have a grade just for being here sitting in class. There are daily assignments that you're going to have to do. But as long as you get those done, you'll get that daily grade. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if you're somebody that is normally, you know, a C student or so, I recommend that you come to class, that you get the information. Okay. Don't just think, well, I don't have to worry about it, so it doesn't matter, because then you're probably going to struggle more than you normally would. Okay. But if you've taken a web class before and aced it and didn't have to log into class at a specific time or something like that, and you know that you're confident in doing that, that's perfectly fine with me. Okay, it's not going to hurt my feelings at all. Um, I will record uh, one of the sections every Tuesday or Thursday, either the morning or the afternoon section. They should be the same uh, every day. So I will record those and put a link to those on Blackboard. So if you do miss for some reason or you uh, need to go back and hear something again, you will be able to, to go back and check those recordings. So do you get everything? Okay. Yes. Oh, you're saying. Um, <laughs> the. Uh, um, the webcam for this class, I have two. I've got one up there, which is usually the one that's on. I don't like the screen back there, so people that are joining me on Collaborate, you're just going to see the screen the whole time. Um, and also, so you guys don't have to worry about it, the, uh, the other webcam is up here and is facing this way, um, so you're not going to be in the shot at all. So none of you will be on the webcam. It's only showing from about right here forward. Okay? Yes. I realize this technology did in a way. <clears throat> we bought it. We got a grant um, over the summer because of all the stuff, the, you know, the pandemic. Um, every school in the state got a certain amount of money to be able to spend to um, upgrade stuff. Um, so we did. We, we bought, uh, I, I walked into the IT <clears throat> office this summer and they had this huge crate with like 200 webcams in it. Um, and they, they went around this summer and installed them all for us. So yeah, it's, it's pretty nice that we were able to do some of those upgrades. Um, and also, uh, if you're not aware, some of that money has been passed along to you guys. Some of you have been able to get some checks for relief and stuff. Um, I don't have all the details on that, but if you're curious about it, uh, go over to Academic Services and ask them. Uh, and there are some forms you can fill out and if you need a little bit of extra help uh, during this time period, and they, they might be able to take care of stuff. Also, if you failed a class in the spring and it wasn't automatically turned into a withdrawal, um, go talk to academic services and they might do that for you. They, they have converted a lot of the Fs from spring into Ws uh, just because of extenuating circumstances. Okay, so <clears throat> just be aware of that stuff's out there. I don't have all that information. I just teach music, but uh, the folks over at academic services will be able to help you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take attendance. So if you are here in person, just raise your hand. 
so that I can associate who you are with uh, with the name. Um, and if you're joining us on Collaborate, if you'll just type here in the chat box whenever I call your name, um, I will mark you as present here. Also, Collaborate people, I do have the audio turned up with notifications, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and it'll let me know that uh, you have a question or have your hand raised. As always, if I pronounce your name incorrectly or you go by something other than what's on the uh, official ros uh, roster, just let me know and uh, I'll try to remember to make that correction. Okay, so like I said, today um, is just kind of the intro to the course. Um, on Thursday, we'll finish up. We'll talk about uh, the performance assessment assignments, which are kind of big special assi assignments uh, that you have this semester, and then we'll actually get into content on Thursday. Um, you also need to know that uh, this semester, the gen ed department switched to being bring your own device, uh, which means that you are expected to have either a laptop or an iPad for class, for all of your gen ed classes. Um, some of your teachers may not be using them, so you don't have to worry about it, but you will use them for my class. Now, kind of. So everything that we do will be on Blackboard. So all of the assignments that we do for the semester will be on Blackboard. That includes a daily assignment that we'll do every day. We'll have what I call daily listening assignments that you'll do every day. You can actually do those daily listening assignments on your phone if you only want to have to worry about bringing your phone every day. Um, but for tests, for all of the exams, those are going to be on Blackboard as well. So you will need a computer to be able to do those. If you don't have a laptop, if you only have a desktop computer at home, then you can stay home on those test days as long as you have a webcam uh, and you can do the, the exams from home using Respondus Lockdown Browser and Respondus Monitor. Um, if you don't have a device at all and you're in this class, let me know. Come talk to me after class um, and, and I'll see if I can work something out for you to be able to take those exams. We do have a computer lab next door. They didn't give me access to it last semester, but I think the new uh, head of academic services uh, is going to. Uh, this semester, I'm not 100% sure, but we're working on that. So I might be able to work that out for you. Also, if you have your uh, laptop or your iPad in class, the assignments, the regular assignments that you do uh, for each unit line up with the PowerPoint, the lecture that we're going over. And last semester, a lot of people like to have those assignments pulled up in class, and you can just do those assignments while I'm going over. You know, I'll answer all of the questions there during the lecture. So you might as well have that open and get those assignments done while you're sitting Yes. You kind of, um, you kind of randomize the questions, or is it like in sequence? In um, for those assignments, they they are are close to in sequence. There may be a few of them that are that are swapped around a little bit, um, but for the assignments themselves, there I try to put them in sequence so that you can just follow along in the book and follow along with the lecture and find them that way. The test is randomized. The exam is randomized. Okay, good question. Okay. So I'm going to switch over to, I have kind of a day one presentation. Uh, those of you that are on Collaborate or if you have a device here, um, if you want to follow along, you can either pull up the syllabus for this class um, or you can pull up the uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to show you how to get to both of those. So when you go, when you log into Blackboard, you'll see uh, my lovely little Bitmoji. My 14-year-old niece introduced me to Bitmoji this summer, so I've just plastered them all over the place. Sorry, you'll get tired of them. Eventually, you'll see me like riding a unicorn and stuff uh, as we go through the semester. Um, but to get to the syllabus, scroll down here to the syllabus button. And this is the most common sentence that all college professors say throughout the year, by the way. Did you read the syllabus? Because it's all there. Everything you need to know. Uh, if you click on the syllabus button here, it opens up a PDF file uh, that I've got open over here. Zoomed in a little bit because we're going to look at my office hours. So you can follow along with that syllabus if you want, or if you want to go to the presentation that we're going to use, I've got it in course materials, part one, and all the way down at the very bottom, there's a link to the day one presentation, and you can open it up that way. And this is basically just everything that's in the syllabus in a PowerPoint form, just to make it easier um, to present the information. And like I said, this is recorded and the screen on the, on the video is going to be whatever's showing up here. So if you need to go back and get this information later, 
I don't know why you would, but if you need it, it's there. Um, okay, so this is music appreciation. Uh, hopefully you're in the right place and you figured that out by now. Um, I am Mr. Logan J. Smith. I have a master's in music. That's the MM is uh, four. Uh, I am the music instructor here at UACCM. Uh, we don't have just a whole lot of fine arts stuff here because we don't really have those as majors. Uh, we just have them under the gen ed faculty so that everybody can get that fine arts credit here. Um, so my office is in this building, which is the Kirk building. That's what KB is for. It's down the hallway here uh, and on the left side, room 133. It's a faculty suite of offices. If you've ever had to meet with anybody else that's in this building with like Ms. Taylor for nutrition or Ms. Jones or Ms. Roach for education, um, we're all in the same office suite, including all the nurses. Um, so if you go in there, it's a big square and you'll find all the faculty offices just by walking around that square. So walk around until you see the office that has a big metal rock and roll sign and a uh, guitar <coughs> next to the door, um, a guitar poster next to the door. That's my office. Um, if the door is open, just come on in, poke your head in, say hi. If it's closed and it's during my office hours or during the normal time of the school day, go ahead and knock. Uh, there's a good chance that I'll be there. I just um, I don't like people walk by all the time. And I get distracted. So a lot of times I'll pull my door shut if I'm working on something or if I'm recording a video or something. Um, so feel free to knock um, and I'll answer. Um, my office phone number is here, 977-2062. Um, that is my office phone, but it does ring through to my cell phone. I have it set to forward um, so that if I'm not in my office and somebody calls my office, I can't answer it. So if you have a question, you know, at seven o'clock or eight o'clock at night, um, you can call that office phone and uh, I might answer. Okay, there's not guaranteed because I might be hanging out with my family or eating dinner or doing something else. Um, but if, if you do call during that time, I, there is a possibility that I'll answer. The best way to get a hold of me is my email. Okay, smithlogan at uaccm.edu. If you're going to email me, you have to email me from your school email address. Okay, um, if you, you know, if I get an email from, you know, Mr. Bling 420, I have no idea if that's you or not. Okay. It has to be your official email address for me to be able to talk to you about school stuff. That's a, a FERPA rule. That's something that I have to follow. Okay. Um, also, if, uh, by the way, with the email, I usually try to answer emails within the hour. If you email me during the school day, during the normal work day, um, if you email me at night or on a weekend, I'll usually get back to you within 24 hours. Sometimes on the weekend, it'll be closer to 48 hours, depending on what all I've got going on. Okay, so um, email is a, is a great way to get a hold of me. Uh, I will almost always respond to you very quickly. You can also, if you're somebody that prefers to text, I'm not going to give you my cell phone number because that's weird, but you can use an app called Skype for Business. It's just like the normal Skype app, but it's specifically for people with Microsoft Enterprise accounts, which is what all of our USCCM.edu accounts are. So you can download Skype for Business onto your phone or iPad or computer or whatever and put in your school email address, log in with your school email information, uh, and you can send direct messages to each other or to me. Okay, so feel free to do that um, if you want to. That's it just, It's kind of like texting. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier for those of you that like to do that kind of stuff instead of emailing. Okay. All right, my office hours have changed a little bit, so I'm going to go over to the actual syllabus because I keep forgetting to update that slide. Okay, so these are my office hours for this semester. Um, obviously, if we end up closing the campus or something like that, all that stuff goes out the window. But uh, as long as we're still here, uh, these are my office hours for the semester. All right, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm here from 8.30 to 10. Friday, I'll probably come in a little bit later just because I don't have to be here so early on Friday. Um, and then uh, from 12 to 1, I'll usually be eating, eating lunch, but if you need to meet with me during that time, I'll be in my office so you can come and chat with me. Uh, and then on Monday and Friday, I'm here from 2 to 3 in the afternoon as well. On Wednesdays, I leave early. Um, I direct music at a small church in North Little Rock, and I've got to get down there to get things ready for rehearsals. And uh, for now, we're, we're actually I'm filming on Wednesday afternoons. Uh, to do our, our big uh, productions for the week. On Tuesday and Thursday, I'm here in the morning before my 925 class, and then I'm here after the 925 class 
uh, from 1045 until 1215. Really, I'm here all the way up until this class starts, but 1215 to 1255 is, is kind of my lunch hour. Uh, but if you need me anytime before this class starts, you can probably find me in my office if I'm not down here. Okay. Um, I can, I don't have to leave immediately after this class, um, but I don't have to stay either. <laughs> but if you do need me for something, if you need to make up a test or something like that, um, you know, just let me know, ask me if it's okay if we just take that, do that after class and we can, uh, I, I don't have anything else going on. Um, usually I can stick around for a little. All right. Um, I do want to make sure you know who the Dean of the General Ed uh, area is. Um, how many of you are uh, working on a, an Associates in Gen Ed and you're going to transfer to like UCA or Tech to do a bachelor's degree after this? How many of you guys are going to apply to? Yeah, most of you, right? Um, so you all fall under Miss Thomas as the Dean of General Ed. She is your Dean, whether you've met her or not or even seen her face. Um, she probably has seen your name at least. Uh, show up, okay? When we when you register with your advisor, we send all of our stuff to Ms. Thomas and she checks over everything to make sure we've got you on the right path. Um, she is there specifically for you, all right? She is also my boss, technically. She's the person that makes sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. She's over in the University Center, the big building at the front of campus, on the second floor in room 206. Pretty easy to find. Just go up the stairs and go to the right, over past the math faculty. And her office phone number is listed here, 977-2070. And her email address is thomas at uaccm.edu. She's been here long enough that she has one of the old email addresses that's just the last name. Um, she's very friendly. She loves working with students. Um, she does whatever she can uh, to help students out and to make sure that you're successful. So if you have any issues that go above my head, uh, with, or with any of your other faculty members, you can go and talk to her about them. If you get withdrawn from a class and you need to appeal that, she's somebody that you can talk to about that to try to get uh, appealed, okay? Or if you need to appeal a grade or something like that, she's the person that, that can really handle all of that stuff for you, okay? Or if you just have an issue with me that you're not, com that you're not comfortable coming and talking to me about, um, you know, if you feel like I'm not giving you the credit you deserve or something like that, you can go to Ms. Thomas and she'll work it out, okay? I'm pretty easy to get along with. If you have any questions or have any issues, you are free to come and talk to me about it. Okay, uh, the course number for this class is MUS2003. Uh, what you really need to know is this number here, uh, which is our Arkansas Credit Transfer System number. So when your transcript goes to UCA or Tech or wherever you're transferring to after you're done here, that's the number that will get you the fine arts credit so that they don't try to put you in another music appreciation class or art or theater or something like that. Okay. If they do, you need to tell them I took music appreciation at UACCM. Here's the number for that course and they'll get you taken care of. Or you can just call me or call us uh, and we'll get the, uh, the transcript information over there so you don't have to worry about it. All right. I want to make sure you get the credit for being here. And this is a three hour credit course. Hopefully you know that by now. We do have a required textbook for this class. Now, there are a couple of folks that started this class last semester. Um, it is a different textbook. Uh, or if you had a friend that took this class and you got the, the textbook from them, I have changed textbooks over the summer. I have moved to the brief edition uh, or the ninth edition. Now, if you still have the 12th edition from last semester, that's okay. It's basically the same. The 12th edition actually just has more information in it. But all of the information that's in this one is in the 12th edition. Some of the chapter names don't line up exactly, though. All right. So if you if you run into that situation or the bookstore sold you the wrong book and you don't want to have to worry about trading it out, um, just let me know if you get confused and can't find something. I've got all the information to be able to get you from one book to the other. OK. Um, one big thing, though, for you is that this book, the brief edition of the book, is only $35. It's one of the cheapest textbooks that you will buy in your college career. Okay, it's only 35 bucks, it's paperback, uh, or you can get the loose leaf one as well that you can just stick in a binder. You do need to have it. Um, I'm not gonna say it's 100% required because I think you could probably pass the class without it, but it's gonna be a lot easier if you have access to the textbook. Because again, all of the answers to all of the assignments are right there in the textbook. Okay, for the assignments, um, I actually just pulled from McGraw-Hill's website. They have 
uh, question generators that line up exactly with the book. They use the exact wording from the book and show me exactly where I can find all that information in the book. So that's what I did. So it all comes from the textbook. And it's so easy for you to be able to say, okay, this is the assignment for chapter one. Here's chapter one and just find all the information you need right there. Now, if the bookstore did sell you the access code, the like $120 cardboard thing that you scratch off to get a code, you don't need that for this class. That is only for the web version of this class, okay? So if you did uh, get that and you haven't scratched off the code already, you can take it back to them. Really, even if you have scratched off the code, they were not supposed to sell that to you and they should know better. So go over there and, and get your money back, okay? So if you just got the textbook, you're good to go. But if they did, you know, upsell you the $120 access code thing, you don't need it. It's not worth $120. I'm saying there's like a, a, a book where it's not like. Uh, if they have it in stock, yes. But you know that one is is fine as well. You don't really have to bring it to class. I stick mine. The one they sent me is just like that too. So I just put it in a binder. That's what I just keep it at home. I just yeah, you can keep it at home. All right. You won't necessarily need it for class. Um, now, if you're working on the assignments during class, it might be handy to have, but you, you don't, you're not going to need it every day. I'm not going to be like, okay, now open your books to page 113. We're going to read about the show. Um, I'll, I'll go over all of that stuff on, uh, on the PowerPoints and, and all that. Okay. Questions about the book? Okay, some classroom policies. Um, I'm not a big rules person. I, I try to be pretty relaxed. I just want to make sure that everybody's aware so that if something comes up, I have the backup to say, you know, this is in the, this policy here, it's in the syllabus. You know that this is what I expect from you. Okay, and there's a couple of other documents that we're going to look at later so you can just kind of have an idea of what to expect. All right, um, I do have to follow the official attendance policy, which means that if you miss more than four classes, and you are failing, I have to withdraw you. Okay, like I said earlier, it's really the attendance, how many classes you miss really doesn't matter as long as you're still passing the class, you're fine. Okay, it doesn't go on any records anywhere that you only showed up to class four times. If you got an A in the class, that's great. You did what you were supposed to do. Okay, um, so be aware of that. If you do get automatically withdrawn, uh, if you do have the uh, administrative withdrawal, which is the AW, You'll get an email that says you have seven days to appeal that um, and you can do that if it was just you know you had a bad couple of weeks or you got sick or something like that you can appeal it and it might let you back in the class if you think that you can actually finish it up and pass the class okay but you need to think long and hard about that it is your best interest to take the w rather than to fail okay if you are on a path to failing the class if we get to november and you're so far behind that there's no way you're going to come back and pass the class, you need to withdraw. Okay. And I don't know exactly what the last day to withdraw is, but it is on the website. You can always ask the advising center. Okay. It is much better for you to take that withdrawal than to end up with an app on your transcript. Okay. All right. Um, if you are coming to class or you're logging in on Collaborate, try to be here on time. I generally start class right when uh, the time starts. Actually, most of the days we'll have what's called a daily listening assignment to start class. And I start those videos about two minutes before class starts and let them go for about two minutes after class starts. Well, I usually go ahead and take roll during all that stuff once I'm more familiar with you and I don't have to call roll anymore. Um, so I'll, cl I'll start class as soon as we're ready to, usually within a couple of minutes of the normal start time. So please make sure you're ready to go during that time. Now, if you're, you know, if you've got a class right before this and it's all the way over in the academic commons or the university center or something, I understand. Just let me know. You know, I'm going to be running in here at the last minute. Um, and that's, that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to holler at you if you come stroll into class a couple minutes late. Not a big deal. Uh, the big thing is just try not to disrupt class if you do come in late. Um, if I'm in the middle of a lecture or we're in the middle of a discussion, um, just come in and find your seat and, and join us. Just get started where you're, where you need to be. Um, and then come to me after class and let me know if, if I don't take roll, if I've already taken roll by the time you get here, come to me after class and say, okay, I came in late. Can you please make sure I, I was counted this year? All right. Don't wait until you get home and see that you got an email saying that I counted you absent to email me. 
go ahead and do it right then at the end of class just come up and say i, I came in late i'm sorry here's and, and i'll make sure that you get credit for being here okay i'm not going to worry about the tardy policy um obviously with bring your own device uh if you do have a computer or tablet or even your phone i don't care if you have your phones out i don't even care if you use your phones during class i'm not this isn't high school anymore. I'm not your mom. I'm not going to stand over your shoulder. And so, you know, you really should be paying attention to Mr. Schmidt and not, you know, scrolling through imagery or whatever. Okay. Um, that's on you. But if it's distracting to the people around you, then it becomes a problem. So please make sure they're on silent. Um, you can log into the collaborate, collaborate sessions from here. If you want to be able to see the screen up close, you can do that. If you want to be able to chat and interact with the people online, you can do that as well. If we end up later on in the semester where it's an even split between who's in class and who's online, I may have you go ahead and log in to collaborate so that you can do some discussion and stuff with the people that are online. Okay. Um, so if you do that, though, just make sure that you have the speakers muted um, and you keep the microphone muted unless you're asking a question or um, especially if you're in here. If you're in here and you don't have things muted, we get this feedback echo effect and we don't want to have to deal with that. So just try to keep stuff on silence. Uh, for exams, you will have to keep everything uh, put away. Um, your cell phones will have to go into your pocket. If you have a smartwatch, it'll have to go in your bag, your pocket. Um, and then when you're logged in on the device, you'll have to be in the Respondents Lockdown browser the whole time that you're taking the exam. Okay, so just be aware of that. Now, because we do use the Respondents Lockdown Browser, um, Chromebooks will not work, okay? Uh, and again, if you have a Chromebook, if you already bought a Chromebook for school and you, you don't want to have to go trade it in on something else, let me know when it comes closer to test time and I'll see if I can work something out to where you can take the test at a later date and use one of our computer lab computers or something like that. Um, there are always options to make that work. The only things that won't work on the Chromebook for this class are the exams because they don't have the Respondents Lockdown Browser for Chrome yet, okay? Or Linux, but you guys probably don't know Linux. Um, you can use an iPad. Um, I do allow the iPad app version of Respondents Lockdown Browser, so you can always do that as well. Uh, private conversations, yes. Can you get on a Mac? Cool. Yes, Macs are fine. Yeah, Mac, PC, or iPad is perfectly fine. You just have to get the program, uh, the Respondents Lockdown Browser. Get it installed. If you have questions about that, you can always stop by my office or go by the help desk at uh, in the academic commons and, and they'll get you straight out there. Um, it seems like a few of you guys know each other, uh, which is great. Uh, that'll make things easier when we're talking about stuff. Um, just try to keep private conversations to a minimum. Um, that really hasn't been an issue uh, since I started teaching here. I think most college students are not going to sit back and just have a conversation while uh, the teacher is lecturing. Uh, again, uh, mostly concerned about distracting other students. Okay, if you choose to not pay any attention and fail the class, that's on you. You're an adult. Okay, but if you're distracting the people around you or distracting me, because I get really easily distracted. If there's, you know, if these guys are having a conversation in a corner while I'm trying to lecture, I'm going to be, it's going to be really hard. So I might ask you to just chill. Uh, if you have a question, the chances are somebody else in the room has that question too. Uh, so just raise your hand and I'll be happy to answer your question. That's questions, comments, anything. I'm, I'm happy to answer them. I don't like to just stand up here and lecture. I'll try to keep it as interactive as possible um, through this. And I also try to limit the time that I'm actually lecturing. Um, we'll listen to a lot of music in here. So it'll be like a few minutes of talking and then listen to a piece of music, talk about it a little bit, and then I'll lecture for a little bit. I try to break it up. These first couple of days, it's a lot of just sitting there and listening to me ramble. Okay, um, this last thing is uh, one of my biggest things uh, for my classroom, my classroom rules or policies or whatever. Um, my biggest policy is to treat everybody and everything with respect. Okay, um, I don't really care what your opinion of me is. Now, I hope you like me. Um, I hope that you enjoy this class. Uh, but even if you think that I'm a complete moron, which you might, because what kind of moron gets a master's degree in music? Um, that's perfectly fine. That's not going to bother me at all. But I do expect to be treated with respect. Okay. So if you have a question, be polite. If you need something from me, and this really applies to all of your college professors, if you need something from a teacher, you're a lot more likely to get it if you're nice and respectful to them than if you go in expecting them to do whatever they want, whatever you want. Does that make sense? 
that's also how you get you know further ahead in life. If you walk into your job and you just start telling your boss, well, you're going to do this, or I need you to do this, you're a lot. You're probably not going to get it, right? You're a lot more likely to get it if you say, hey, I really messed up on this. You know, I I got behind by a couple of days. Is there any way that I can make up that work? Then I'm a lot more likely to give it to you. Okay. So treat each other with respect as well. When we're having discussions about music, we have uh, comments about stuff. You know, don't be rude to people. Uh, just because they have a different opinion of you doesn't mean they're any less intelligent than you are. Um, and I think that's something that we've kind of forgotten is that we can disagree about stuff and that's okay. You can disagree about stuff and still be friends. Um, you can disagree about something and still treat each other with respect. All right, it doesn't have to immediately fall to, well, I disagree with you, so you're obviously a moron. You're obviously an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. That's not how it works. You know? Yes, it is. <laughs> False. <laughs> the, just because you say your argument louder does not mean that you win. Okay, that's not how it works. Um, what? Uh, instead, if you disagree with somebody, I want you to say that you disagree with them. You know, that's fine. But then you have to tell me why you disagree with them or why you think they're wrong. All right, and that's perfectly okay. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, please refrain from you know calling each other names or being derogatory in any way, and of course uh, from using offensive terms for people. Uh, I think we know most of the obvious stuff that is not acceptable in any classroom. Um, there is one that I always try to point out because uh, we live in a culture specifically in Arkansas and I've noticed specifically around here um, that things get thrown around a little more commonly, um, but I am not okay with in my classroom. Uh, I am not okay with using the word retarded as a derogatory term for anybody or anything. I just want to throw that out. Uh, whether you agree with me or not, it doesn't matter. My own brother disagreed with me on this. Okay, I don't care. You're not going to do it in my classroom. Is that fair? Okay. I don't think that's something too hard to ask. Um, and then, of course, obviously, stay away from the big obvious stuff. Um, you know, being rude to somebody for any reason is not acceptable in an academic environment. I don't. It hasn't really been a problem since I've been here, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. But just wanted to make sure that we're clear on that. Um, I do consider this to be a PG-13 environment. Um, now, most of us are, are adults, uh, and we don't have to worry about it too much. But uh, just try to, again, keep language uh, you know, fairly respectful and academic. Um, treat it as if you were talking to the chancellor of the university. Um, you know, don't say anything here that you wouldn't say to your mom. Um, or really what it is is don't, don't say anything in class that you wouldn't write in a formal essay. <laughs> in English, okay? Um, now, you might hear me drop a word or two, uh, and the reason I say it's a PG-13 environment, we're gonna talk about rock and roll. What are two things that come with rock and roll? Drugs and sex. Drugs and sex. We're gonna talk about sex. We're gonna talk about drugs. We're gonna talk about sex when we talk about composers from the 17th century. You would be amazed the amount of classical composers that had STDs, some of which died from STDs, STDs. Um, we're also going to talk about a composer from the mid-1800s who got high on heroin, uh, well, opium, is what heroin turned into, or what became heroin, who got high on opium and had a really bad trip and hallucinated and wrote a piece of music about it. We're going to talk about that kind of stuff. Obviously, we're going to talk about the Beatles, and you can't talk about the Beatles without talking about LSD, right? The Beatles did a lot of LSD, a lot of LSD. Okay? So we're going to talk about that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, just throwing around uh, language for the sake of, of language is not really okay in an academic environment. Questions about that? Comments or concerns? So turning assignments in by the due date, um, everybody asks about late work, okay? Uh, here's the deal. If none of my college professors had taken late work, I would not have gotten the degree. Okay, I would not be standing in the board. So I tend to be pretty lenient about things because I was given a lot of grace from my college professors at UCA. Um, I do officially have late work policies that I can point to if things become excessive. If you're continuously turning in stuff late over and over and over again, then I may become a little stricter about this stuff. But most of the time, I'm pretty laid back. Okay. The first rule is uh, within 48 hours of an assignment being due, you can turn it in, and it's as if you turned it in on time. You get full credit. I'm not even going to harass you about it. Okay. 
If you turn something in between uh, 48 hours and 120 hours, which is about a week after it's due, then you'll get half credit for it automatically. Okay. Now, the chances are, if you shoot me an email and say, hey, I'm about a week late turning this in, sorry, you know, my dog died or whatever. Um, my dog died a few months ago, so I should probably be more light about that. But, um, you know, then I'll, I'll probably go ahead and give you full credit. Um, I tend to be very lenient about that stuff. And generally, after a week, um, you, you won't get credit. It's a little bit late at that point. Okay, so try to stay within a week of when things are due, uh, of turning them in, and you should be good to go. You should have no problem with it. All right? Um, for the performance assessments, which are the big bad assignments that we're going to talk about on Thursday, you have to turn those in on the due date uh, or before the due date. I will not accept those late at all. I'm going to assign those on Thursday. You'll have all the information you need to be able to do them. And then you have like three months to do them. Okay. So get them done on time. I will not accept those after the due date, which is like November 26th. Right now. Okay. And I'll explain those more uh, on Thursday. So you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, what else for exams? Uh, the way that exams are going to work this semester, because we have both kind of the online and the in-person thing is on an exam day, and your first exam is on September 10th, um, here in a couple of weeks. Uh, so on September 10th, if you come to class on September 10th, we will take the exam in class. It will still be on the computer, but you'll take it in class, okay? Uh, you don't have to worry about Respondus Monitor if you do that. You also have to have the lockdown browser. If you choose to take it from home, you'll have to have the, a webcam so you can use Respondus Monitor. If you've not used Respondus Monitor before, Basically, it just watches your face while it actually records your face while you're taking the test. Um, and it has an algorithm in there so that if it looks like you're looking around or you're looking at a textbook or something while you're taking the test, it'll ping uh, and I'll get a notification so that I can go back and check that and we can have a conversation about it. Okay. Um, you'd be amazed how accurate it is. I had a lot of, I talked to a lot of my teacher friends this summer that caught students cheating that way. Um, so just be aware of that. If you're going to take a test at home, you need to have access to Respondents Monitor and you need to do it the right way. Okay? Don't have other stuff pulled out. Just study for the test like you're supposed to. Really, it's, it's harder to get around Respondents Monitor than it is to just study for the freaking test. Right? It's, my tests are not hard at all. So just study for them. You'll be fine. If you take the test at home, you will have until most of our tests will be on Thursday. You'll have until the following Monday to turn it in. Now that's by 8 a.m. on that Monday morning. When I get here on Monday morning, I'm going to go through and, and double check all the test grades and make sure that they're put in. Okay? So if you're doing it at home, you will have the weekend to do it. You don't have to do it during class. <clears throat> if you do come to class on a Thursday where we have the exam, most of the time we're far enough ahead that we can just do the exam at the beginning of class and you can go and be done. Okay? There might be a case where I need to refer 30 minutes or so and then do the test, but I try to avoid that as much as possible. Make sense? Okay. If you do have to make up an exam, um, you can set up a time to either come to my office and take it with me or bring your laptop and I'll, I'll work with you if you, you know, whatever the after class on the next day that you would be back to be able to make it up, or I can send you over to the testing center and have you make it up over there. It's going to be a little more difficult having to do it on a computer to send you over there, but We'll make it work. Okay, my grading policy. I have uh, five categories for our assignments, and I do weighted grades. Okay, I'm not somebody that tells you there's a thousand points uh, for the semester, and, and that's how it works. I don't do that. I'm a weighted grade kind of person, mostly because it allows me some flexibility. If there's something that I feel like we need to be, uh, you know, tested on again, I'll uh, I'll push that through. Okay, and I'll maybe add a few assignments here. Um, so your in-class work and homework assignments all fall under the assignment category on Blackboard. Uh, that's 25% of your total grade. So anything that's just homework or something that we do in class, those daily listening assignments, that's all in the, uh, the assignment category, which is 25% of your total grade. Yes. This is a question out of my curiosity. But, um, if you wanted to, could you wait to grade? Like a homework grade, ninety percent. Yes. If you wanted to. If I wanted to, 
I wouldn't. It's hypothetical. Yeah, you could. You, I can set it up however I want to. Okay, I can make the final worth fifty percent of your fine, your grade if I wanted to. I'm not gonna do that because that sucks. But you can, yes. Um, the performance assessment assignments that we'll talk about on Thursday, those are twenty percent of your grade. That's two assignments that are twenty percent of your grade. They're ten percent of your grade piece. Okay. That's why I make such a deal about those assignments. They're really not that hard. It's not like it's a major research paper or anything. It just takes a little while to do them. Okay. Maybe like an hour. That's all it takes. Okay. I'll talk about those on Thursday so that you don't have to stress too much about it. Uh, quizzes. You'll have listening quizzes throughout the semester. There'll be a listening quiz with each exam, and there's six total exams. Those listening quizzes are 20% of your final grade, and I'll drop two of them. Okay. Your two lowest ones will get dropped. There's a couple of them that may be a little bit harder for you. Uh, some students have a hard time differentiating between some of the music, so not a big deal. Uh, those will be, uh, those lowest two will get dropped. For the exams, we have six exams. Um, they are 50 question, multiple choice. Um, and like I said, they're on uh, Blackboard uh, and you'll know exactly what you got by the time you finish the test. It'll pop up what grade you got and all that stuff. Um, I like those because I don't have to grade them. It just automatically grades it for me. Um, those are 20% of your final grade, and I'll drop the lowest one. Okay, so five of those six exams will go into your final grade. Um, I don't start dropping those until midterm because I want you to have a more accurate representation of your grade. If we've only taken one exam, that would obviously be your lowest one, and it would just go away. So I, I would rather you see what your percentage is for a little while before I drop those lowest ones, okay? And then the final is 15% of your final grade. Um, the final is 100 questions, multiple choice. It is cumulative, and every one of those test questions comes from a previous exam. So your previous exams then are your study guide, okay? We'll talk about the performance assessments later. <clears throat> Okay, real quick, let's look at Blackboard. And again, I just wanna make sure you know how to navigate around and get to where you need to uh, for this class. So when you first log into Blackboard, you have the Begin Here screen. Uh, if you forget where something is or how to find something, uh, click on this video. It's like a 15 minute intro video that'll kind of explain a little bit about uh, what's going on and where to find stuff in Blackboard. If you're, you know, just, want to hear my my voice again later on today the syllabus documents are here i'm going to open up a few of those in a minute and then everything else for the class is under course materials okay in course materials you'll have the performance assessments folder which is a separate folder we'll talk about on thursday and then each section of the class will have a folder so this first section is part one the elements of music and that's the one i have available to you now all right. In a week or two, you'll see part two will show up there. For those of you that like to work ahead, you'll be able to go ahead and start moving on to that section. Within that, you've got your instructions for uh, that unit for that week or so. Um, we're going to stay in part one for the first three weeks of class. This leads up to our first exam on the 10th of September. Okay. So your instructions there are to read uh, chapters one through 10 of part one. Um, and then complete the assignments. Now, you don't have to read the chapters word for word. They're pretty easy in the brief edi edition of the book. So if you're somebody who likes to, then that's fine. But I have these assignments set up that if you do these assignments and you have the book open while you do the assignments, you're going to get all the important information. Okay, so you have two different kinds of assignments for my class. You have your uh, just regular assignments and you have listening assignments. The regular assignments, there'll be a few of them for each unit, for each part, and they're split up by chapter of the book. So assignment 1.1 is part one, chapter one of the book. Okay. Assignment 1.2 is part one, chapter two. Does that make sense? And for these that have a dash with them, if it's 1.3-4, that's part one, chapters three and four. There wasn't a whole lot of information in those chapters, so I just combined them together uh, to be one section. And that way, you know, if you get and do assignment 1.3-4, you can open up to chapter three of part one, and that's where you're going to find all the information. Okay, 
And um, as I mentioned earlier, I did put those in sequence uh, so that you can go through and it should be in the correct order as you come uh, through the book. Does that make sense? Also, so these are exactly like the tests are. Uh, they're self-grading in Blackboard. They're multiple choice questions. And all of these questions are the test questions. So these are your study guides for the test. Okay. Those assignments are the exact questions with the exact same options that are going to show up on the exam. Also, I'm a kind and generous guy. The assignments are all set to unlimited. Uh, so you can do them as many times as you want. It's unlimited attempts. Um, and when you click submit, it's going to pop up a thing that shows you all of the correct answers and which ones you got right, which ones you saw, which ones you got wrong. Does that make sense? So there is no reason why you shouldn't get 100% of the points on all of those assignments because it's going to show you how to go back and fix it. Does that make sense? I'm a lot more interested in you getting the content correctly and using that to do well on the test than I am about just punishing you for getting it wrong the time. That's not learning. Make sense? Okay. So make sure you have plenty of time to do those. Yes, sir. Um, it's under course materials in Blackboard. Sometimes in Blackboard, uh, if you're on a smaller screen, it's not going to show you the nav bar on the side. So just kind of hover over there and you'll see the arrow pop up. No, it's under part one. So you go to course materials and then the part one folder. And yeah, that guy with the saxophone. It, well, it's supposed to be. <laughs> The problem with the Bitmojis is that the fat guy option for body type, there's two fat guy options. And like that's the smaller fat guy. And then the bigger fat guy that's more reflective of who I am still doesn't look anything like my body shape. It's like the little tiny shoulders with the big, huge gut. And that's not what I look like. I'm just, I'm fat from head to toe. Uh, so I had a hard time finding and making that shape correct. Uh, but whatever. My, my, 12, my 14 year old niece approved. So we just went with that. My daughter thought it was hilarious, but she's 10. Her opinion doesn't count. Um, OK, so that's the regular assignments. And then you have these listening assignments. And I gave you some special instructions for these. So for the listening assignments, uh, these are um, a Word document that you're going to download and answer and then upload your answers uh, back into Blackboard. OK, so these are not self-grading. And these are not multiple choice. Um, the idea here is that you're going to click on a link, you're going to listen to a piece of music, and then you're going to answer some questions about it. Okay? For the links on here, they're all either Spotify links or YouTube links. Um, if you don't want to have to mess with Spotify, you shouldn't have to log in to be able to listen to this stuff. But if you don't have to mess with Spotify, you should be able to just search YouTube for whatever the exact title is and find it, and it'll get you at least the information that you need. Okay. Um, so for these, you're going to open up the Word document. And it's going to pull up the assignments. So you've got piece one, uh, which is the Firebird Suite, scene two. And I've got a Spotify link here. So you'll click on that. It'll open up Spotify, and you can listen to it. And then you've got five questions to answer about that piece of music. And again, this information is found in the book. All of these pieces of music have what's called a listening outline in the textbook that goes with them, and it's going to have all this information there. Okay, but I just want to make sure that you're listening to the piece of music on your own. We'll listen to a section of it in class, but we don't have time to listen to the full length of every one of these pieces of music. So some of that is on you. You're going to have to do that on your own to get to be able to hear all of these and answer all the questions. Does that make sense? So you'll answer the questions on the document. The next step is extremely important. Save the document. Make sure you hit the save button, because if you don't, when you upload the document, it's just going to upload a blank thing for me, and you're not going to get credit for it until you fix it. Okay. So answer the questions, save the document, and then you'll re-upload it into the assignment. I'll show you what that looks like. 
So you've got this little browse my computer button here. You'll click on that. You'll find the documents and you'll select it and you'll upload it into Blackboard and then hit submit. When you hit submit, it should show you a preview. Be sure you look at that preview and make sure that your answers are showing up there. Otherwise, that'll let you know that you turned it in wrong. Okay. I did set these to unlimited attempts as well. So you can go back and fix it if you made a mistake. I've had some people that actually clicked on the wrong file. So they turned in the wrong assignment. Um, you can fix that. That's, that's not a big deal. Okay. Any questions about those, the listing assignments? Okay. And of course, if you run into, if you get going on it and you think of a question, just email me. Um, down at the bottom of that folder, you've got the PowerPoint for that section, which this is what we'll start in on Thursday, and then today's presentation as well. And every single unit, every part will have all of that stuff. So let's look at the calendar real quick. This course schedule is a PDF file with uh, the calendar for the semester. Looks like this. And this has just a week by week breakdown of what we're doing. Okay. I don't have every single assignment and every due date set up on this, but for each unit, you will see the due dates for those assignments as you open them up in Blackboard. Okay. So for uh, the first three weeks, we're going to be doing the elements of music, which is the kind of intro to what music is, some terms, some definitions, going over instruments and all that good stuff. Uh, we'll do that for about three weeks and then we'll have an exam. Okay, if the exam is at the bottom of the week, then that exam for you will be on Thursday. So our first exam is the Thursday of the third week, which is going to be September 10th. And then that exam is due on the Monday morning of September 14th by 8 a.m. So if you do that exam at home, you've got the whole weekend to do it. That makes sense? So you've got a full breakdown of everything. The chapter numbers start over with each section. So part two actually only has two chapters, one and two. Part three has uh, like 12, 15 chapters or something. And you can kind of see how the breakdown is here. Part two is obviously really short. There's only two chapters and it's only, we're gonna have like, we'll, we'll talk about everything on Tuesday and take the exam on Thursday for part two. It's a real quick turnaround for that one. The rest of them are at least two weeks long the, we get into the Romantic era, we actually split that one into three weeks because it's a little bit longer. Okay, so you can kind of get an idea of everything we're going to go through. Um, I do have an extra week, an extra few days in here that I put in for padding just in case we get behind. Um, you know, I may make adjustments to due dates and stuff just depending on the flow of class and how things go. Right, and then you've got your final exam dates down here. So your class is the Tuesday, Thursday, 1255 class. So your exam will be December 15th at 10 a.m. And that's for the final. You will have to take the final at that time. I'll talk more about that whenever we get close to it. Okay. There's another document in this same folder called Course Expectations. This is a lot of that classroom policy stuff that I already went over. You can read through that on your own. Uh, let's see the collaborate. There was a question over here. Let me pop in here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Michael, what's your question? All right, Michael says, when you start an exam, do you have to finish it in one sitting, or can you save your progress and come back? I believe you have to finish it in one sitting. I think that's how I have them set up. Okay, good question. Thank you. Uh, for those of you that are in person and have not logged into Collaborate yet, if you decide on Thursday that you just want to log into Collaborate and uh, attend virtually, click this Collaborate button, and then uh, it'll show you the session. So this is a recurring session that'll happen. Uh, just look for whatever the date is for there and click on it. And uh, if you click on a session that's in progress, it should, or there should be a button over here that tells you you can join that session. There we go. 
So it'll say join session, you click on that, and that'll join you into the class. Okay, I do appreciate if you're going to um, join online that you set your name to your first and last name uh, so that I can count you present in the role because I can go back and look at the report and make sure that I got everybody uh, present that was actually here. Okay, the recordings of each lecture will be on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel for the USCC and music stuff. It has a whopping three subscribers at the moment, um, but uh, I will post links to those in uh, Blackboard so you'll be able to access those as well. Okay, so those will be in um, under course materials for each part. You'll find those lectures, those recorded lectures. Okay. I think that is everything I need to tell you. Um, I do post announcements uh, regularly, so check those in Blackboard. I would check every day, uh, get on and check for an announcement. If you haven't downloaded the Blackboard app for your phone, uh, go ahead and download it and turn your notifications on so that if, I, if your teachers post an announcement, you get a notification. Okay. If, I'm, if I wake up and I'm sick or my daughter's sick or something's going on and I'm not going to be able to make it to class, I'm going to post an announcement that says class is canceled that day. I'll also send an email out, so make sure you're checking your school email. That way you don't come all the way up here just to find a sign posted on the door that says Can class is canceled. Okay, I will always let you know at least an hour before class can is canceled if I can. Yes. The previous methods have uh, now the Blackboard app has it sent out alerts that tell you that like a notification. There should be a setting in there that will do that. Um, but at least make sure you have your school email on your phone because I'll every every time I post an announcement, I also send an email with the same information. Okay. Anybody in class have any questions? Can I ask you a question after class? Yes, absolutely. If you have any questions, come ask me after class. Um, otherwise, you're free to go. Thank you guys. Uh, Folks that are on Collaborate, if you have any questions, you can throw it in the chat, or if you'll just wait a minute for it to clear out here, I'll uh, I'll chat with you uh, in person. Uh, yes, Aaron, all of the tests are set for an hour. Um, so if you have like extended time, I was just telling another student, um, most folks that only takes them about 20 to 30 minutes to take each test, they're 50 question multiple choice. Um, so that hour should be plenty of time, even if you have, uh, if you normally have extended time on there. But if that's not enough time for some reason, um, just let me know and I'll, uh, I can make any adjustments I need to make.